IVF is in vitro fertilization. In vitro, in Latin, means in glass. And what that means is that the fertilization of the egg by the human sperm happens in a petri dish in the laboratory, outside of the normal place where fertilization would occur, which is the human fallopian tube. Now, common indications for IVF would include things like tubal factor, meaning that there are problems with the woman's fallopian tube. It might be damaged or might be blocked. Male factor, problems with the partner's sperm. Endometriosis, a condition in which the lining of the uterus is outside of the uterus. And a very common indication for in vitro fertilization would be what we call unexplained infertility, situations in which the physician has not been able to make a definitive diagnosis. So in order to do in vitro fertilization, the first step is to stimulate the ovaries. We call this ovulation induction. What happens is a woman takes multiple injections of hormones, which are called gonadotropins. These are given by subcutaneous injections with very little needles that the woman can administer herself. And this is done over a period of about 10 to 14 days. During that time, we monitor the patient's progress. And what that means is we'll do transvaginal ultrasounds and blood levels to allow the IVF physician to understand how the ovary is appropriately responding to the medications which the patient has been administering. At the appropriate point in the cycle, when the IVF physician determines that the eggs are mature, the patient will give what we call a trigger shot. That's also an injection, and that allows the final maturation of the egg and then the egg retrieval, the removal of the eggs from the ovary, occurs in a timed situation, and that's 36 hours later. The patient comes in, usually about an hour before the egg retrieval, meets with our nurses, our doctors, and the anesthesiologist. The egg retrieval is done under light general anesthesia, so the patient is actually unconscious, just like for other surgery for this procedure. What we do is, with transvaginal ultrasound, place an ultrasound probe in the woman's vagina, which is attached to a needle. And using ultrasound, we can guide the needle into the follicle, the fluid surrounding the egg. And we have a little suction device, and that allows us to capture the fluid surrounding the egg. Because the egg floats in the, fallopian, in the follicular fluid, the egg is then captured as well. And we move from follicle to follicle until all of the eggs are retrieved. Once the eggs are in the petri dishes, um, they're sorted, counted by the embryologist, the scientist that takes care of the eggs and the sperm, and the partner's sperm are concentrated and then placed with the eggs in the petri dish. That's called fertilization. The next morning, the embryologist can tell how many of the eggs which were retrieved were actually fertilized. The last stage is embryo transfer. This is where the embryos, one or more embryos, is placed in the woman's uterus in the womb. We do this under ultrasound. The embryo is placed in a little tiny plastic catheter, guided through the cervix into the uterus. Position is confirmed by ultrasound, and the embryo is released. This is done without anesthesia, and the patient can walk off the table and head home. So for most patients, under most circumstances, we're only transferring one or two embryos. The reason that we transfer less embryos now than we did previously is we're trying to avoid multiple gestations, in other words, twins or triplets. So embryos that are not transferred, which are grown appropriately out to day five, those would be called blastocysts, can be frozen for future use.